everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So my name is Kirsty and today's video is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to be doing a do's and don'ts video. So I haven't done one of these before but I'm going to be starting with focusing on eyes and I'm going to be going through some of the common mistakes people make when they're beginning drawing eyes and how you can prevent doing these. So this is the don'ts eye so as you can see it's really unrealistic and there's a lot of mistakes that I'm going to be going through with this one and then this is the do eye so as you can see it's a lot more realistic and just better drawn really so I'm going to be going through this and hopefully you guys will find it useful okay so now I'm just going to run through the materials that I use for these drawings so the first thing that I used was the graphite pencils by generals and I used the gradations F and 4B I also used a Kimberly 9XXB pencil an extra hard charcoal pencil and a carbon pencil and for blending I used a stump and I also used a lot of tissue as well Okay, so I'm starting with the don't eye and the first thing that a lot of beginners tend to do is they tend to just make an oval shape out of the eye and they do it very pointed at the corners and then they just make the tear duct out of that oval shape rather than giving the tear duct its own shape. So make sure that when you're drawing the tear duct you look at the reference photo and you give it its own shape rather than just doing it into that oval that you've created. Another mistake beginners tend to make is creating a circle for the iris where you can see the whole of the iris whereas in a lot of the eyes you will see part of the eye covered unless you're doing a surprised face or a shocked face. Another thing people tend to do is do a very harsh highlight and they tend to do it as like a triangle and I used to do this when I was younger whereas highlights tend to be softer and there's more of them rather than just, just one harsh highlight. Another thing people tend to do with the iris is just create this spoke sort of pattern and even though there is lots of lines in the iris if you just do them like this just draw lots and lots of lines in the iris it's not going to look realistic and there's just no depth to the iris now. Okay, so next thing is drawing the eyelid and a lot of people tend to do the eyelids as just one line and eyelids, the only reason you have that line is because of shadow and you need to do it a lot softer with a lot more graduated shadow so that it's not just a harsh line. Another mistake people tend to make is when they're doing the eyelashes. So firstly, with the lower lash line, people tend to forget there's a waterline and just not draw it in and just draw the eyelashes coming straight from that bottom line that you drew earlier. And also, they tend to not give the eyelashes the correct direction. So eyelashes do go in a certain direction and they are curved as well. So make sure you're doing that if you want it to look realistic. Okay, so next I'm moving on to the eyebrows and the first thing that people tend to do wrong is they just block it in really dark to start off with. So I do like blocking in the eyebrows but not this dark because it's then hard to do the individual hairs and get the depth on top of it. So then when I do start to do the individual eyebrows on top of it, you can see that I have to go really, really dark to make them stand out. And I'm also going in the same direction with the eyebrows, which is what a lot of people tend to do. Whereas with eyebrows, very much like eyelashes, they have their own direction and it's very important that you look at your reference photo and look at the direction that the eyebrows are going in. And also, if you want to do a realistic drawing, you need to look at a reference photo because you can't just imagine where these things are. With realism, it's really important that you use a reference photo. So another thing that I've seen some people do is draw a really dark ring around the iris and even though the iris at the outer edge does get a bit darker it's all about subtle changes and subtle shading rather than just having harsh lines so if you want to do realism then you need to avoid having harsh lines wherever possible. Also, even though it's called the white of the eye, you still need to do shading to make it look spherical. So a lot of people would leave the white of the eye completely white and don't do much shading at all. Whereas even though it's meant to be white, there's still a lot of shading in it, especially if you want to get it to look realistic. Okay, so that's it for the don't eye and now moving on to the do eye. And the first thing that I just did was I used blue tack to lift some of the graphite sketch off of the paper because like I said, with realism, you don't want any harsh lines. So I raise it so that I can still see the lines but that they're not so harsh. And now I really like to use brushes to shade and add graphite powder to the paper. But then I decided that I wanted to use the stump and tissue paper instead. But you can use brushes if you want. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm creating shading and I'm creating shading on the eyelid, on the white of the eye and also I'm blocking in where the eyebrows are. But as you can see, even though I've blocked in where the eyebrows is, it's really light and it means that when I add the individual eyebrow hairs, I don't have to go really dark to make them stand out. 
So now I'm using the charcoal pencil and I'm using that to block in the main shapes. So I'm using it to block in the iris and as you can see there's not the whole of the iris showing. The top bit is covered by the upper eyelid and I've also blocked in the pupil and I used some lines on the iris and some markings but I didn't use just lots of spoke patterns. Now as you can see this pupil isn't completely circled because there was highlights in the pupil and there was a number of them. So I made sure that I didn't colour these in because it will be hard to lift up the charcoal and graphite once I'd put it down. So I used a stump to shade in all this and I used that to create some nice soft shading. And even though it does look dark at the moment it won't be dark in the end and I will lift up a lot of highlights. So I really recommend using tissue paper to shade because it's really cheap and it's really good at getting a really soft shading and creating really smooth skin. So now I'm just darkening the eyelid and working on adding shadows and it's really important that you look at your reference photo. So I did have a reference photo when I was drawing this and make sure you get a reference photo as well. Even if it's just taking a picture of your own eye or your friend's eye, it's really important that you work from life because it will also help train your brain to overcome the other mistakes because they simply won't be there for you to draw if you're following the reference photo. So now I'm using the stump to create some shading around the eye and work on the skin around the eye and also add a bit more darkness to the eyebrow itself. And I didn't do this perfectly soft because in the reference photo her skin wasn't completely soft. It was a bit of texture there. So I didn't have to worry about making sure it was completely airbrushed and smooth. If you haven't used a stump before then it might take you a bit of practice to get used to using one. So if you have it slightly darker, so as you can see mine is quite dirty and quite dark, it means it's going to deposit more charcoal and powder onto the paper as you use it. But if you are just using one and it's clean then you might need to put a bit more on it to get the right um, colour payoff that you want to get. Because mine's dark so a lot's coming off it straight away but if you've got a newer one then it won't come off as much straight away. And also you don't need to apply lots of pressure to make this work. I also found that if you use a lot of back and forth motions then you also can get stop and start points. Whereas if you do it more where you put the stump in one area and then sweep it to the other one without doing this back and forth zigzag motion then you're less likely to get these start and stop points. So now I'm going in with that 9XXB pencil and this is a really good pencil because it can get your drawing really really dark but it's not graphite so you don't get that really really shiny look which I really don't like personally. So that's why I love this pencil because it's not a charcoal pencil and it's not really a graphite pencil because you don't get that shine. But it can get your drawings really black which is really good if you want to get good contrast. Now I'm just using that pencil to add some more detail in the iris and like I said look with all the mistakes I made I'm not doing them in this one so I've created a separate shape for the tear duct so I didn't just add it onto that oval I made as you can see the eye isn't oval it's not got harsh corners either I've also added a waterline which is really important and it's a really big thing that people tend to forget to do as well. So now I'm carrying on working with the eyebrow and before I created that foundation base of where the eyebrow was and now I'm just deepening it up in certain areas before I go in and add the individual hairs. So now I'm adding the individual hairs and I made sure that my pencil was sharpened to really sharp points so that the hairs didn't look really fuzzy. And as you can see they're not going in the same direction, look at your reference photo. So the eyebrows on the inner corner tended to go up and to the right and then as you go across and as the eyebrow veers down, the hairs veer down with it and it's really important that you don't just do all the hairs going up unless they're meant to be. So for example if a female um, she grooms her eyebrows or a male, if someone grooms their eyebrows to make them all go in the same direction and they're meant to be that way then draw them like that but don't just always draw them like that because you've gotten into that habit. Make sure that you're doing it intentionally. Okay then once I did that I used the tissue paper to blend that out because it was harsh and I don't want it to be that harsh. I can keep building on it and this will add depth but I don't need it to be that harsh at the start. So now I'm working on the highlights and I'm using blue tack because this is really cheap and a lot of you will probably have it around your house. But you can also use a kneaded eraser but this works just as well and it's a really good thing to use. So it's really good to use tissue for blending because it's cheap and blue tack for creating highlights because you can mould it into individual shapes and it's just really good at lifting up the graphite and the charcoal powder. 
So I used that on areas where I wanted the highlights to be and you can see that it picked up a lot of the graphite and the charcoal. And I also used it to add some more detail into the iris as well. And I also used it in other places, so on the upper eyelid where there was different um, highlights on there and also near the tear duct on the inner corner of the eye I used it as well. And I can also use it to create the highlight on the eyebrow which I didn't do in the don'ts video. So with the eyebrows there tends to be the highlight towards the top of the so just below the eyebrow there tends to be this highlight and it's really important that you make sure you're getting those highlights where they need to be and the shadows where they need to be if you want it to make it look realistic. Okay, so now moving on to the eyelashes. And as you can see with that bottom lash line, the eyelashes aren't coming straight from the top of the line you drew. They're coming from the waterline. It's really important that you have this section of skin separating the eye and the eyelashes. Okay, another thing to focus on is how I'm drawing them. So I'm going with the direction that the eyelashes are meant to go in. So they are curved and they're also not just going in all different directions. You can see that they're all going in a particular direction that they're meant to be. And if you're not sure what direction eyelashes are meant to go in, look at lots of reference photos of eyes and you'll see that they all have this pattern of how they go. And also just look at your own eyelashes and study them, study your eyes and really look in detail at reference reference photos of eyes and your own eyes before you go and draw lots of them to see exactly what's there. So now I'm just going and I'm perfecting certain things and looking at my reference photo. This girl had quite a lot of makeup on which is why the eyes were quite dark on the top um, eyelids and also on the lower lash line. So she had eyeliner on and stuff like that. So that's why it's getting quite dark. But if yours doesn't have makeup on then you don't need to do it that dark. Also, another thing to remember is that I did my eyelashes quite dark because she was a female. Whereas if it was a male or a child, you might not want to do those eyelashes so dark, otherwise it might look like they're wearing makeup. So really look at your reference photo. If it doesn't need to go that dark, then don't do them that dark. Don't just do them dark because that's what you've always done. Try to break the habits that you do and just make sure that when you're looking at the eyes, you're doing everything on purpose and not just because it's a habit. Okay, so I added more detail to the eyebrows, added some darker hairs, and I even blended that again to soften it out so I can go over it once more. So now I've got two layers of depth. So I've got the eyebrows that I did at the start, and then I also have the eyebrow layers that I've just done, and you can see that some are slightly darker than the others. And now I'm going to go over it again and also add depth to the darker areas of the eyebrows. And this is really important if you want to add realism. So it's really important that you have a good contrast, that you get the darks as dark as they need to be and the highlights as bright as they need to be. And it needs to be a right, the right balance of shadows to highlights as well. But all this is going to come with practice. So don't worry if you can't do all these things in your first go. Just keep practicing. Focus on one thing at a time. So if you have like five mistakes that you were doing, just focus on one mistake and then in that drawing improve on that mistake and then once you've done that just move on to a different mistake you don't have to try and combat them all in one drawing if you can that would be great but just take it at your own pace Another thing that will make your work look more realistic is that when you're using your pencil strokes, if you do some pencil strokes and then blend it out, it might look a bit grainy at the start and you might just see some of the lines that you drew. To avoid this, do it lighter, so don't apply much pressure to your pencil and also just keep doing it in layers and then keep blending that out and it will soften it up a lot and you won't have such a harsh grainy lines of where you applied the pencil. And I'm going in with that blue tack again to create even more highlights. So. I'm doing this because this gives you multiple layers of depth and I just want to make sure that they get as bright as possible. So even though I lifted them up with the blue tap before, sometimes you can just get a bit of graphite powder go onto them which dulls them out a bit. So make sure at the end you pull out your final highlights that you want to to make sure they're as bright as possible. But you don't have to do this with every highlight, just the ones that are meant to be really, really bright. And also, as you can see, I've added lots more shading to the white of the eye. So it's not white by any means. There are certain areas that are more highlighted than others, but especially in the inner and outer corner and where the upper eyelid is, there's a lot of shading and it actually can get quite dark depending on your reference photo. So don't just think because it's the white of the eye that it's going to have to be white. Make sure that you look at your reference photo and copy it exactly. 
Anyway guys, that's it for this tutorial. I hope those tips helped you and if they did, let me know in the comment section and let me know if you want to see another one of these videos but with something different. So say like hair or mouths, noses, whatever. Just let me know what types of tutorials you guys would like to see. And also if you're new to my channel, I hope you enjoyed the video and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more tutorials and more helpful tips and tricks videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!